thing. I call to order this regular meeting of the Vermont Town Council for Monday, the 23rd of September, 2024. Madam Clerk, would you please read the Open Public Meetings Act compliance statement? The notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been expect to this meeting of the Township Council. The meeting time is along with the public internet link. Said notice in the meeting agenda was posted in the municipal building and sent to the official newspapers of the township, the Vernon New York Times, and the Star Ledger, 48 hours preceding the start time of this meeting. The agenda and handouts can be viewed on the org slash council meetings. It's on the meeting agenda and instructions on how to copy. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Would you call the roll, please? Councilwoman Holland? Here. Councilwoman McGrath? Here. Councilman Room? Here. Deputy Mayor McAvoy? Here. Mayor Tamboro? Here. Mayor also present tonight is Township Manager Joseph York, Township Attorney Brian Aloya, Deputy Township Manager Kevin O'Sullivan, myself, Municipal Clerk Jennifer Terry. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Would everybody please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Just Thank you, everyone. For the mayor's report today, just a few items. First of all, congratulations to Congresswoman LaMonica McIver, who won the special election for the unexpired term, uh, and she will serve the rest of the year in Congressional District 10. The general election will be in November, as is usual. So congratulations to Congresswoman McIver, and I hope to see her in Verona frequently. Uh, thank you, everybody, for participating in the 9-11 ceremony, and especially to Deputy Mayor Hackboy for, uh, for speaking, and to Elisa Northrop, our PIO, for making arrangements, and uh, to Steve Gould as well. Uh, and everybody participated from our fire department, our rescue squad, our police department, the uh, Brown High School Chamber Choir, the HBW Middle School, and Our Lady of the Lake, a Roman Catholic school, and to Father Peter. It was really wonderful to see everybody there. I had the, the pleasure of attending the Corona Together Cornhole Tournament in support of Mallory's Army, which is a cause very near and dear to my heart, the anti-bullying um, cause as an educator. This is something that we absolutely need to be spending more time and attention on. Um, I got to root on our deputy mayor. Unfortunately, my cheers didn't necessarily uh, have the desired reaction, but uh, but he was a good sport throughout, and it was really a, a nice event. So congratulations to everybody from Brown Together for that great event. I had the opportunity to attend the uh, ribbon cutting and grand opening of Golf Paradise in Verona. Uh, which is a really neat place. So I recommend anybody who likes to golf, go over there. You can golf in a simulated manner on how many courses, uh, Tiffany Mayor? Five. Yeah, something like 25, 26 different courses, and you actually like golf the whole course. It was very, very interesting. Um, they seem to have an energetic group there. So uh, that's right in Pilgrim Plaza. I was not able to attend the official opening of Tweedledee's Candies and Curiosities on Bloomfoot Avenue. I was teaching a drill on trauma and splinting at the Brown Rescue Squad for several hours that day. But I did take the Rescue Squad crew over and bought the crew whose average age was half of mine <laughs> quite a bit of candy to eat and enjoy. Um, and uh, I got to, to speak with the owner. And it's, it's a lovely business and a lot of fun. I can't wait to go back and buy the Lego shaped candy for my nephews the next time I go up there. Thank you for the council members for attending or to uh, Councilman Roman for deputizing that day. Thank you to Assemblyman Barless and Assemblyman Phillips for attending uh, the openings of both Golf Paradise and Tweedle Tees. Uh, I appreciate their support. I'm sorry, I actually, it was only something from Barless at the Golf Paradise, but um, I appreciate their support. And it definitely shows the uh, a large scale government support in your business. On a, uh, on a happy note, I performed my third in a group of weddings. I had the pleasure of performing a number of weddings, but my third in the same group of friends uh, this past Friday. 
it started with Mark and Mark, and it now went on to a third couple, and these guys were the witnesses for Mark and Mark. Um, and so congratulations to all of our couples. One of the, there's four couples in the group. One group got married at one of the village without me, but uh, they they definitely said they would have loved to have me there. So that was very nice. Uh, but a nice group of people. And the couple that just uh, joined in matrimony this weekend planned to move to Verona. So I'm very, very excited about that. Um, we just had our breast cancer flag raising. So thank you to Wings Cancer Support Group and to the Nets Angels for not only attending the the event, but for the amazing work that they do uh, for our, our breast cancer uh, patients, survivors, uh, their families, and for the community. And it's always good to see them. Uh, and finally, I just want to close out by sending well wishes to Mayor Emeritus Frank Sapienza. Uh, and uh, Frank, I, I wish you the best and uh, get better as soon as you can. And that's all I have, Mr. Coltrane. I'm sorry. Um, well, we'll do Mr. Coltrane and I'll do the appointments. One, one check. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, we'll start with tomorrow morning at 9.30. We have our uh, monthly mayor's uh, call. And I did send, they didn't even tell me who I was. I'm Julius Culture. I'm the county liaison, Mr. Mayor. Um, tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. is the monthly mayor's call. I did send the link to the administrator, and hopefully uh, we see you on the call. Uh, also, tomorrow is Senior Wellness Day at Cody Arena. It starts at 10 to 2. It's a great event for seniors, for wellness, for giveaways, et cetera. And uh, it's well attended, so hopefully any senior in town can join us at Cody Arena. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that was very interesting about your golf opening, so I may pass by in attendance since I'm an avid golfer and always need help. People on economy, we would appreciate that. Yes, without a doubt. Uh, we have our full family festival at the Essex County Environmental Center on Sunday, September 29th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's on Eagle Rock Avenue in Roseland, just before you cross into Morris County. And the rain date is Saturday, October 5th, 2024. Um, other things that are happening are... Um, Sunday, uh, the 29th, and I just mentioned that, the full envir environmental uh, center. We have computer recycling on uh, October 19th, Saturday from 8 to 12 on Bradford Avenue in Cedar Grove. We also have on the same date, which is Strut Your Mutt in Branchbrook Park. And we also have the same thing, Strut Your Mutt, October 26th in Grover Cleveland Park. And, and Gardens are Glow in Montclair, which is off of Bradford in Montclair on Friday, October 25th. And next month, I'll give you a little bit more on what's happening in October. Very chock full of events and Halloween, et cetera, is coming along. Uh, basically, that's my report. Any other comments, questions? Anything for Mr. Coltrane? Councilman? Thank you. Um... I just want to thank you in advance for addressing the concerns that our uh, chair of the Shade Tree Commission raised about Brown Park and the stairwell going down. I think there was a railing that was a yes. little loose, and I'm sure it's uh, been addressed. But I just want to thank uh, the county for being so um, you know, prompt on addressing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Phil Golf. Uh, I just came. <laughs> All right. To finish up uh, my agenda, we have some appointments to the Environmental Commission. Um, so I am pleased to appoint Adam Bulger. We are moving him from an alternate member to a voting member. And Kelly Henna as a member filling an unexpired term. Mr. Bulger's would be an unexpired term as well. And I'm going to move the addendum appointment to this part of the report because it all happened at the same time. And appoint Phil Bolak to alternate number one, 
run on expired term ending 6-30-2026. The date on the addendum was uh, a typographical error. So the unexpired term would be June 30th of 2026. I thank all of them for their willingness to, to serve. The Environmental Commission is a working commission that does quite a bit um, beyond just monthly meetings and cleanups and mentoring their junior commissioners, uh, providing site plan review, public education. Some of the, the videos that they've put up on social media have garnered 5 million views. Uh, it really is, it's a great group and it's an honor to be there. Liaison, there is one more alternate position that is open. So if anybody is interested in that position, please reach out to Mrs. Kiernan. And that is my report, Mr. Diarco, report of the manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm sorry, my agenda took you out. Lost in the system somewhere. I'll highlight items as I usually do. Uh, item number one on my agenda is the RFPs for the streetscape designs did come in. We have six companies that submitted. Um, I think uh, Kevin, and Deputy Manager, and I will be going through those submissions and selecting the, the top three based on criteria. And then I think we may want to schedule a special meeting because it will be encompassing just for three companies to present to you. Um, uh, the clerk will coordinate that with the mayor and council. It's about um, stuff importance uh, and timing is that um, your affordable housing will be uh, out for opening and and filling, which will affect your CDBG zone. Uh, we'll be working on the applications to expand your zone so that you'll also be able to apply for grants for your downtown and the CDBG also beyond just uh, curb cuts. So your timing is, has been perfect. Uh, we continue to meet with the uh, fundraising company for the emergency services building and reviewing the policy. We'll get you know, continued update on that. But while we are working in, in two capacities, one the 501c3s and the township attorney will be helping the police with a foundation to shift it there. We'll also be uh, working on the value of the naming policies within the complex. In on the naming policy, which has been introduced, any it's in the manual already. Any recommendations that the council's sending in, even after it's been included, so I can work with it uh, in a positive manner. We'll make any amendments to council members that submit things. So it's a, like all your policies; it's a living document that I'll continuously update. Um, and then. Um, um, the, uh, I did want to report on all of your parking signs, working with the Chamber of Commerce and, and staff, all but two have been funded and will be in the process of being re redone and they'll be on the avenue uh, for your 2025 season and updates in the downtown. Um, parking lot signages have all been completed. Um, and the township attorney will be working on the copyright of your seal. And then I'll pass it to Kevin for deep reports. Any questions for Mr. Diarco? Ms. O'Sullivan. Mrs. Kiernan, the folks at home can't see the video. Okay. Uh, perfect. Thank you. Oops. Mr. O'Sullivan, you're up. Thank you, Manny. Um, I will go through my report uh, as, as quickly and succinctly as I can. But uh, I just to follow up on an update on the pool rate study and strategic plan, uh, we remain on target for completing drafts of that of both documents in early October. They will be circulated to the Recreation Advisory Committee, and we anticipate presenting at the October 21st Mayor and Council meeting. Uh, we have a number of updates on our wastewater projects. Our smoke testing is complete. Uh, administration will be sitting with the township engineer to come up with a list of recommendations and priorities on the findings of that smoke testing program. Uh, we had a successful meeting with the iBank regarding our primary clarifier pumping station project down at the wastewater plant. Uh, they informed us that uh, the final list of, of comments that they provided us is there's four or five general administrative comments that they wanted us to change our specifications. 
accompanied with uh, having an authorized construction management contract where the last items to get the project out to bid. Uh, there is a resolution uh, effectuating the latter of those and the design engineer is completing those minor modifications to the plan. So we'll have that project out to bid in the very near future. Uh, we have a kickoff meeting with the design engineer for the other wastewater improvements. That's the UV disinfection system and the micro screen project. We'll be meeting with the design engineer to kick off that design project tomorrow. And uh, we look forward to advancing that as quickly as possible as well. Um, there's a number of other wastewater projects that are going on. The, the last notable one that I'll reference is the collection system trunk line on um, adjacent to Derwent Avenue. Uh, we are still receiving some complaints on, um, on some, some issues during uh, heavy rainstorm events. So the township is pursuing quotes for a heavy cleaning, uh, tree root removal, and televising of the entire trunk line from Bloomfield Avenue to, wait, uh, to the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, that we do anticipate having second and third quotes uh, for that so we can advance that project in the coming weeks. Uh, regarding the water wells, Lynn Drive well continues uh, on schedule. That should be back in service by December. Uh, Fairview Avenue well, we uh, again, we we had that meeting with the I-Bank. That, that was one of the projects that they did indicate we do need uh, final uh, approval from Green Acres on our exemption application. Uh, I did receive feedback from Green Acres today that they are having an internal meeting tomorrow regarding our application, so we hope that they advance that. Um, but we've been discussing in coordination with DP, iBank, Green Acres, and enforcement on the Fairview Avenue well. Uh, again, uh, that meeting with the iBank was a good opportunity to discuss the Claridge Drive pump station project. Uh, again, they, they generally classify that as the same as the wastewater project in that there were a few minor comments and uh, they did want a construction management contract in place to authorize us to advertise for bids. Uh, we expect having the uh, construction management contract on the October 7th meeting, and hopefully we can get that project out to bid uh, immediately thereafter. Um, we, I know we've been talking a little bit about the parking kiosks that have been installed. Uh, we're hoping to have those uh, up and running uh, by this time. There has been some, uh, some difficulty in getting the kiosks integrated with the park mobile payment application so the two uh, programs communicate. Uh, we have been in touch with them on a daily basis over the past few weeks, so we are hoping that the final um, final coding for the kiosks is complete, and those are up and running 100% in uh, the next one to two weeks. Um, we have a few energy initiatives that we're still continuing to work on. Uh, the energy audit is continuing to move forward. We have draft reports for all the facilities, except for the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we will have a presentation from the the local government energy audit team uh, this fall, um, and they are nearly complete with, with the wastewater plan. So we expect to be scheduling them shortly. Uh, we also continue to work with our solar consultant on updating their presentation. Uh, they're, they're shifting their presentation from a feasibility study to a proof of concept. They're again, going to be answering a lot of the questions that came up. They're currently un underway on that. Um, the big project that's seen a lot of advancements the last few weeks has been the community center playground and the ADA restroom. That project should be uh, substantially complete by the end of the week. Uh, there will be minor punches items over the following week, but uh, we are uh, we are very close to the final completion of that project. For, uh, this past Friday was a, a, an important day or an exciting day. The, the, the prefabricated structure for the restroom was delivered and lifted off a crane and placed on site. Uh, so that, that got us very near completion on that project. Uh, we have a number of the road projects which are still moving forward. Uh, they're, they're largely complete in construction. It's just a matter of some paperwork to close those projects out and get the final D DOT reimbursements. And we do continue to work with the Complete Streets Technical Assistance Team for the Linden Avenue uh, speed control uh, efforts that are going on in that project. Uh, the Everett Field project will uh, is into its final design. Uh, there is the bond ordinance for second reading tonight, uh, but we are working with Neglia and we'll continue to work with Neglia and all the interest groups to then present periodically uh, through to the council on the um, advancements of the final design. Uh, pickleball courts are out to bid. Uh, we'll be receiving those October 16th. Um, 
Uh, similarly, the pool is also out to bid. We will be receiving those bids also on October 16th. Uh, we have the town hall windows and repointing project is out to bid. We will phase one of that is is um, is being bid, and we will receive those on October 17th. Um, and that generally concludes our report. Unless there's questions, on thank you. Any questions for the deputy manager? Mr. Roman, just going to go into a little more detail on that construction manager. Is that so? Normally, when we do construction, obviously our our municipal engineering firm is pretty heavily involved in the construction management. Um, is this a third party firm that's going to basically sit between the township and the general contractor on each of these, or what is the contract structure? How is the contract structure going to be different from typical projects? So th this uh, the the resolution that's on the agenda tonight is the. Um, it would be the authorization of the design engineer then advancing into the construction management and the construction phase. phase. Uh, Mom McDonald was the design engineer for this project. I think design started uh, a few years back. Uh, it was just a matter of completing the application to the iBank at this time. So they, they've completed the design. They're most intimately uh, involved with the design and the details of that project. So they'll, they'll be handling the management of the construction. Oh. Yes. Yeah, just moved to this next level. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's fairly typical. And I think design professionals usually, they just generally, it's in their base contract scope to provide construction management services. That was the construction management was not part of the original authorization. So this this would then authorize them to advance into that phase. Okay. Councilwoman McGrath. Um, thank you. So, in terms of the technology for this room, I know things are being worked on. Just roughly, what is that timeline? Um, so that because, um, you know, there was a really big, you know, zoning board meeting here and there was no video attached. And so, yeah. you know, uh, once again, this is in the spotlight um, for transparency purposes. For there is an, uh, an open negotiation with Comcast on their franchise renewal. Um, they uh, the the financials of that um, are currently being negotiated in that it. Um, the target would be to have this um, this room upgraded at um, through the technology grant that would be assumed in that uh, franchise. Um, however, there's it's it's part of ongoing negotiation that we are going back and forth on what those final financials will will come in at. And do we roughly think that maybe it'll take like two months to resolve or six months? Like, what is a rough timeline that we hope to resolve those negotiations? Uh, we just received some feedback from them within the past week. Yeah. Okay. So we are responding to them currently. Okay. Um, if I think it lines up with whatever that whatever the final financial figure is, um, okay. it would line up with any supplemental capital planning that would come in the twenty twenty five budget. So it may it may turn into some capital planning in the twenty five budget as well. So okay. It's supplement. And our lead negotiator is Colonel Luba. Okay. So we'll so have the army on okay. our side. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Uh, just a quick you mentioned the Linden Avenue study that we're doing. And it came up after the last meeting. Someone brought this up. Uh, question are we doing any of the surrounding streets along with it? And the reason I ask is because going back years ago when they put stops, the four way stop signs on Linden, everybody starts going down Woodland. So I'm wondering if they're going to look at Woodland and maybe add stop signs there also. So the, the grant for the technical assistance was specifically for Linden yeah, Avenue right. from Fairview to, I believe, Cumberland. Um, th what they are proposing is three different forms of temporary demonstrations along that stretch in different areas uh, in an effort to see which ones would be the most effective in controlling speed. Um, this should, in turn, serve as a good template for what we can potentially do for uh, controlling speed on other streets. Um, but that's that's not part of this particular scope. Thanks. Any other question? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Jericho, anything else? No, Mayor. Mr. Sullivan's question is that. No. Okay. All right. So we'll table the yeah. uh, sponsorship recognition for another time. Uh, Ms. Northrop and I have been in conversation, and Chief Karen has been involved about having a ribbon cutting unveiling 
on the triangle, but there's a little public safety thing there that your chief of police is um, said he'll make it work. So we're all thinking it'll just kind of be us. It won't be. We can't fake a lot of people on the island, so it'll be us and DCH and the administration. Very complex. Yeah, so. uh, do care about your safety. And that would be on a set on a weekend morning, not on. Yes, five a.m. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sunday. Uh, we will make it work. It's such a beautiful sign. We definitely want to stand next to it. Um, okay. All right. Moving on to our council member reports. Deputy Mayor McElroy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm going to start a little repetitive here, but uh, welcome to new businesses, Golf Paradise and Tweedle Tees. I was at the ribbon cutting for Golf Paradise, uh, and. Through the, ch the chamber is very the chamber of commerce is very excited about all these businesses. Uh, Tweedle Tees did reach out to them, and unfortunately, I kind of was the one that said let's do it at noon, and then work got in the way, so I couldn't make it. But I've actually tried to go there four times now, and three of the times they were so crowded, I just didn't want to sit and disrupt the owner. So uh, I hope that continues for them, and both these businesses are successful. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ken McKenna and Manette's Angels uh, for joining us tonight for the flag raising and uh, Holly Denton and the Wings Cancer Support Group. Uh, this is a very uh, near and dear topic to me, uh, but as the mayor said in his remarks, uh, everybody is pretty much affected by breast cancer uh, one way or another through family members, friends, and relatives. So uh, I thank them for being here and all that they do for for everyone that has to go through this. Uh, I was present for the excitement this week up at the community center. Uh, the playground is looking great, but seeing the bathroom uh, unit come off a truck, uh, raised up in midair, up and over the electric lines and dropped into place uh, with perfection, in a, I think it was under two hours. Uh, so full bathroom, ready to go in probably three or four hours. Uh, it was it was quite impressive. So I thank everybody involved, DPW, Buildings and Grounds, uh, the management staff, Elisa, uh, for, for being there and uh, making it go smoothly. Uh, our director of public works that, uh, although on vacation, uh, still shows up. So thank, thank you to him and the rest of the staff that, that helped out. Uh, as mentioned, uh, Verona Together did have their cornhole tournament uh, a couple Saturdays ago, uh, and congratulations to Mallory's Army as they're the recipients the recipients of uh, the proceeds from this uh, against Verona Bags Bullying Together was their theme this year. Uh, that is a group of families uh, that got together in Verona, and they've done this as their fifth tournament. And they do raise a lot of money towards very, very good causes over the years. So I thank them and, and all that they do. Uh, I would like to mention uh, September 11th and the ceremony that we had. Uh, it was a very nice ceremony, Mr. Mayor. Wonderful job uh, in your speech and running it. Uh, once again, something that everybody uh, was affected by. Uh, some closer than others, but one way or another, it affected all of us. So it's a very uh, solemn ceremony. It, everybody that was involved, uh, we'd like to thank them, Police Fire Rescue, uh, and everybody, and even like having the VHS chorus there, the choir, is just uh, adds a very nice touch to what we've been doing for a couple of years now. But for all those that joined in, all the uh, eighth grade classes, uh, we thank them too. Uh, and I think this is lastly, the uh, Ver Sustainable Verona will be having their EV fair on October 5th. It will be at the Verona Pool uh, lower parking lot from 11 to 3. I think they're up to about 15 or 16 electric vehicles that they're going to have. Uh, you basically name it, it's going to be there. Uh, Rutgers is bringing a solar-powered race car there. I believe it's a race car, but uh, it's definitely a solar power car. Uh, and there's going to be uh, electric bikes you can test drive in the side lower parking lot. Food trucks, DJ, it's going to be a fun day, 11 to 3, October 5th. And lastly, included in this is Sustainable Verona. Uh, did put a lot of time and other groups 
and people put a lot of time into their application for their silver award, and they were awarded uh, the silver certification this year, uh, up from bronze. They had 34 actions and 12 different categories. They scored 415 points when they only needed 350 points to get the certificate. So congratulations to everybody in that group uh, and others in the town that helped out. They did a wonderful job and they will be honored on Tuesday at a luncheon in Atlantic City at the League of Municipalities. So if any of the council members are there or anybody else from the town and wants to join, uh, I'm sure they would bring us up on stage for a nice photo op. Okay. So that's all I have for this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councilman Roman. Thank you. Uh, my items are a little bit repetitive, so I will go through them quickly, but uh, I do have to say thank you very much for the 9-11 ceremony to everyone who worked to put that together. Um, it was a very touching ceremony. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, thank you very much for your speeches. Um, very, very poignant words that you had for the uh, for everyone. Uh, and I appreciate all of our emergency services, the uh, Verona High School Choir, clergy, the township administration for putting this together, and then especially the township staff for doing all the flags in the square, which just looked absolutely beautiful and was it's a lot of effort and very well worth it. So I think this is just a fantastic ceremony that town puts on. Just uh, I'm glad we're able to keep this tradition going. It's important. Um, and then just congratulations to both of our new businesses. I was able to attend uh, Tweedledee's along with uh, Councilwoman Paul and Councilwoman McGrath. Um, great business. I uh, want to thank our assembly members for showing up as well. Uh, congratulations also to Golf Paradise. I regret not being able to attend. I was overseas on uh, business uh, during that one. Uh, that was all I have for this evening. Thank you, Council. Councilman McGrath. Uh, thank you. Um, I too attended the 9-11 ceremony. Um, it was really beautiful and poignant. And I echo my fellow council members' remarks on thanking everyone involved. Um, and to the breast cancer um, awareness flag raising today, um, you know, as a, a woman, as a mother, um, as a daughter, obviously this is an issue that is very close to uh, my heart, uh, especially since, um, you know, I had a good friend this year who died of cancer and one of the cancers she had was breast cancer. So I was thinking of her today and my friend who is a survivor um, who was uh, recently diagnosed and treated. Um, so thank you to um, Minette's Angels and Wings, two excellent local organizations. Um, I too, uh, I did go to the Tweedledee's Candy um, grand opening. What a fun fanciful store um, full of whimsy and representing kind of the vibrancy of imagination and family um, focused fun that really Verona is becoming known for between that and the Princess Cafe. I think these are two businesses within walking distance and the bookstore that are all, um, you know, really kind of congealed together in a wonderful way. Lots of synergies there. Um, I also attended the library open house um, uh, a few weekends back, and I want to applaud them for a great event, um, but also by inviting in the League of Women Voters um, which did a voter registration drive and they had a cute activity for the kids where they voted on which stuffed animals should be added to the library's collection. I regret mentioning this and not knowing the winner, but I think it was like a hamster or frog and something else. So it was very, very cute. Um, and I think though, you know, one of the, since we last met, obviously one of the most, um, um, a very important event that happened was a special election. I do want to congratu congratulate Congresswoman, and this was only of a few minutes ago, she was just sworn in in Washington, Congresswoman uh, LaMonica McIver. I've had the pleasure of getting to know her over the last few weeks. Um, she was the former Newark Council president. She was one of the youngest people elected to Newark City Council. She is the mom of an eight-year-old. Um, and I think many would agree we need more moms in Congress um, that are really in touch with um, issues that are so... Um, uh, pressing and important for our residents, such as the price of childcare, amongst others. I've had a chance to talk to her about some of Verona's issues that we have with our um, aging first responder facilities and flash flooding. And these are things that have happened in her community. So I know that she will serve us well. I just want to thank to the voters of Verona. It was a low turnout election, but Verona really did show up. We actually had the highest vote by mail return rate in the entire 10th congressional district, um, which I think just shows how engaged our voters are um, in every election. We also had 56 
uh, 56% of our voting electorate either voted early or utilized um, early voting, which we are so for fortunate to have in the Roman Community Center. And I want to thank our municipal clerk, Jennifer Kiernan, for all of her hard work on elections and ensuring that the early voting at the community center runs well. And I also want to highlight that we were honored to have the lieutenant governor come and visit our facility because of its excellence. So again, thank you so much, uh, Municipal Clerk uh, Jennifer Kiernan on that and to all of the voters who participated. Uh, finally, since our last meeting, we had a neighborhood traffic and safety committee meeting where we did talk about the Linden Avenue project, um, which was uh, mentioned in the deputy township manager's report. They also are planning on uh, meeting with the township administration on a draft of a, a complete streets policy. Um, and they talk also extensively um, too about how to make the town more bike friendly. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, that committee progress. Um, and I do encourage residents to bring traffic and safety issues to that meeting. Um, they do meet every other month um, and they will be meeting at the end of October. Um, and then this week on Wednesday, the Multicultural Inclusion and Accessibility Advisory Committee is having a meeting um, and they are having an event uh, for Hispanic Heritage Month um, on um, uh, after the EV fair um, on Saturday, October the 5th at three o'clock. Um, it's going to be a great podcast with uh, two young adventurers um, who, um, you know, explore adventures and I believe it's they're of Puerto Rican descent. Um, so that will be at the Roman Public Library at 3 p.m. and food will be served. And that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Holland. Thank you. Um, I do just want to remark on the somber and um, moving 9-11 ceremony. It was particularly impactful to have the eighth grade students there, many of whom read um, two books over the summer regarding the 9-11 um tragedy and so it was great to have them there to be part of the experience and and really to just bring the community together to remember such an important event in american history <clears throat> i also want to acknowledge that between the last meeting and today we did hold a rec committee meeting and during that meeting there was a robust discussion about the everett field project uh, recommendations ultimately came out that in the two-story addition that VBSL will be contributing, there was a recommendation that only portable sound systems be used instead of a permanent installation of a sound system at this time. So um, that was a recommendation that was recently emailed to the council, and that was a robust discussion that was had during the rec committee meeting. They also broke into several subcommittees, which will be addressing discrete topics ranging from disability programming to the pool and other aspects of their mission, including a recreation strategic plan or master plan. Um, so there was a lot of engagement, a lot of enthusiasm, and we're, we're definitely seeing action coming out of the rec committee. I also want to compliment Jen, um, our municipal clerk, regarding the election because I think it was really important to, to have that early voting facility here in Verona for myself. I utilized it while my kids were, you know, playing at the fields at the Verona Community Center, and I just think it's such an asset to have in our community, um, and I know that you're a big part of having that, so I just want to thank our municipal clerk. I also want to acknowledge our municipal clerk for leading an election discussion with uh, 20, I believe it was, approximately 20 second grade Brownie Girl Scouts um, and leading them through the steps necessary to earn their democracy badge. Um, so we definitely had a very lively election. There was a runoff. There was then a special question on the ballot. Um, and so it was a very engaged electorate. Um, each of them had to register to vote when they came to the meeting. <laughs> because it's really important that they understand the voter registration requirement. Um, it was very sweet and very engaged, and the Girl Scout leaders and the parents were very pleased. So I hope these girls take it away. And I think it's important to recognize that at every level of Girl Scouting, there is a democracy badge, and it's so important for the girls to engage, and women in particular, to engage in the voting experience. 
Similarly, I want to acknowledge the contributions of the Township of Verona at various different levels, but notably the DPW for assisting the girls of the eighth and ninth grade girls of Troop 20528 in finishing their silver award project. The girls um, constructed two mini libraries out of reclaimed wood and had them installed beside the two bus stops in town. They also worked with the Lions Club and the DPW to procure the necessary materials to revitalize both of those bus stops so the girls the girls and some of their friends and parents assisted in painting the all of those bus stops they've also worked with new jersey transit to audit all of the bus stops in town identifying where bus stop signs were damaged or obscured or missing so we're going to get replacement bus stops and sign and the girls have worked with the Verona Public Library to have transit themed um, story times and commuter reading lists um, to enhance the public transportation experience. And I believe that the collective bookstore is also going to have a commuter oriented reading list. So I think it's been like a whole community effort with these girls, but certainly there's been a lot of engagement from the Township of Verona. And I just want to um, recognize that and express my appreciation. Um, Finally, I was able to attend the ribbon cutting of Tweedledee's candy store. And I will just say that I very much appreciate the Alice themed uh, <laughs> decorations within it. I, I too have an affinity for an Alice and um, I expect with two middle school aged daughters, I will be spending a lot of time at the candy mm -hmm. store. And then actually, I'm so sorry, I did forget one additional note, so shame on me. I did get outreach from the U12 girls softball team, um, identifying that they were in fact the summer champions for their age level. So I did just want to express my congratulations to those girls. Um, they were just beaming with pride. It was like the sweetest pictures ever to see them with their trophies. Um, so just really pleased for them and just really want to congratulate them on their win. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. All right. We're going to be moving on to our hearing and adoption of ordinances. Next item on the agenda, on the agenda uh, is an ordinance on second reading. Madam Clerk, please read the title of ordinance. This is 2024-33. Bond ordinance for a supplemental appropriation of $150,000 for preliminary planning expenses for the improvement of Everett Field, located on Bloomfield Avenue, Block 707, Lot 10, hidden by the Township of Verona in the County of Essex, New Jersey, and authorizing the issuance of $142,500 bonds or notes of the Township. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It's something moved the ordinance. So moved. Move. Motion is made by Councilman Holland. Is there a second? Second. Second by the Deputy Mayor. Now it's time for a public hearing on Ordinance 2024-33. Madam Clerk, please read the public participation statements. Anyone from the who should speak on this matter? Zoom, please raise your hand by pressing the raise hand on your monitor. If you're dialing the phone, press star nine. Zoom, please raise your hand with the lectern. Once you recognize, clearly state only your name and township of residence. Or to provide your street address, to note that these meetings will be posted on the township's YouTube channel to address the council's dialogue. Choosing to speak has been heard. You may address your call. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Just a reminder, this is comment only on this ordinance. Okay, seeing no public participation, I'll close the public hearing on the ordinance. Is there any council discussion? Councilman Roman. Yes. Um, well, I'm okay with uh, this moving forward. Prior to us uh, doing the actual construction bond, whenever that is time, I would like to ensure that the policy regarding sound systems is codified into the park regulations of the township. Um, I did receive the correspondence from the rec committee. Um, my opinion on it is that is still that no amplified sound should be permitted at this facility at all. Um, the exception for portable sound systems, I would want to discuss with them a little bit. Thank you. I, I tend to agree. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Councilwoman Holland? Yes. Councilwoman McGrath? Yes. Councilman Roman? Yes. Deputy Mayor McAvoy? Yes. Mayor Tambora? Yes. Mayor Ordinance 24 33 passes 5 to 0 and will be published according to law. At this point, I'll open 
for public comment on any matter that anybody would like to speak about. Comments are going to apply if we talk about anything. And hearing none, I will close public comment. We'll have another opportunity at the end of the meeting. Moving on to our consent agenda, which includes two sets of minutes, as well as 12 resolutions. Will somebody please move the consent agenda? Do you need something called? Yes. Um, if, if you can, please pull the minutes from August 19th, please. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So I'll hear a motion on J2 and K1 through 12. So moved. Second. Correction rule for that. Okay. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. We have to. Okay. We have to call the budget. So, the uh, the motion is made by uh, Councilman McGrath. The second is by Councilman Holland. Um, I'm going to open for public comment on the consent agenda only. The public comment statement applies. You can even talk about K two if you want or K one. We're going to have public comment on everything. Right. Hearing none, I will close public comment on the consent agenda. The deputy mayor is recognized. Uh, my pack, I just want to make sure that uh, K7 is labeled properly. We had it. It's K8. There were two K8s. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Just so, just, and on that, uh, in this one, the last two pages, uh, da -da 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 -da, the scope of work, just one minor correction in the first. Uh, paragraph it says just correct green acres the less less word and i think in the funding section section d we have uh expenses for the commerce and mount prospect i think we should label like the specific commerce court and mount prospect avenue just so public knows exactly what we are talking about on those two things just two minor changes so thank you deputy mayor Councilman Roman, I just wanted to ask about the uh, imaging services contract for uh, the, the records. Um, what scope does that cover? Basically, what does that uh, get? And, and the clerk's plus maps and archive. Right. That was basically my question: was how much? You know, so it's, it's the entire archive, basically everything we have on paper right now. In those two, those two will be moving on. Thank you. You're in you're in full motion. Okay. That you requested. Jordan yes. I mean this is this is yeah. this has been one of my big desires. So when this is all digitized, there'll be an indexing way that it will be easy. I mean if people still have to file an upward request, or can we put a lot of this just online without people having to file a request? The hope is to put it on. There's an OCR search. It's okay. fairly simple for us. There's sure. something available online. We'd love to see how many documents have public works. Yeah, I think that, but as, that's the intent. With as much available online without the need to follow up a request, not only gets people access to the documents quicker, but also saves a lot of manpower and a lot of a lot of manpower, not only of our, our clerk, but our, our our secretary and our clerk's office and our township attorney. So uh, that would be a big deal. Councilman Hines, do you have a Oh. So it's just so when they're going to be imaged, they'll be searchable PDF documents. Yes, they are. Um, PDF A, they have to be um, in the state form. My dorm, mm -hmm. so it's a PDF A. Okay. And they're certified with the you know, records management or a couple of years. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. So, so this this was one of my other question. How far does this number get us? Like, because in the past, we talked about a much larger number to get this done. It's getting up. Bill, excellent. The technology is improving so much. It's technical recognition and AI. Adobe has big AI uh, implementations, so and now it'll be actually able to recognize and do a lot of the indexing, which previously would have been done by hand. So under, it's, this is one of the only things that's getting cheaper in government. Right, I've got Right. And these two departments, these are a good chunk of our paper records. Right? Yeah. I imagine police is also pretty heavy, and we might have to give them in a later year, or uh, what else is left to do after this? Police have done a really records destruction. Right. So, yes, the engineer's office would be next. Um, that would be a large sum of it in the taxes. Awesome. 
I see it in your capital budget each year. Yeah, let's mm-hmm. keep going. I mean, this is a, this is very exciting. But, but yeah. Okay. So is anybody looking from home thinks is going to think that we're strange, but um, it really is a great, great advance for us. Any other? <laughs> he, he likes the paper yeah. record. There's one person here that's yes. very happy. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I would imagine so. All right. Hearing no further council discussion, we'll call the roll, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Holland? Yes. Councilwoman McGrath? Yes. Councilman Roman? Yes. Deputy Mayor McAvoy? Yes. Mayor Tamboro? Yes. Mayor, uh, this is K1 through K12 will be numbered 164 through and including 175. Thank you. And would somebody please move J1? J1. Councilman Roman moves J1. Is there a second? Second. The second is by Councilman Holland. Is there any, I've already called for public comment on anything on the consent agenda, so is there any council discussion on the minutes? Mayor, I'll be recusing myself from this vote. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll for everybody except for Councilman McGrath? Councilman Holland? Yes. Councilman Roman? Yes. Deputy Mayor McAvoy? Yes. Mayor Tambora? Yes. Mayor passes four to Thank one, you. One. The addendum was dealt with during the mayor's report. If you have anything on for new or unfinished business, just uh, ask that anybody who has not given their comments on the um, on the ordinance related to uh, attendance of committees to please send them to our township attorney. I thank uh, Councilman McGrath getting hers in today and for Councilman Holland for being the first. Um, I will now open for public comment on any item that anybody wishes to discuss. Same public comment, same applause. Hearing none, I will close public comment. While we made a resolution for executive session, I do not believe that we will be having executive session. So, is there a motion that anybody would like to make? I make a motion to adjourn. Councilor Roman makes a motion to adjourn at 7.52 p.m. Is there a second? Second by less than two hours, any other meeting we've ever had. Yeah, the Deputy Mayor yes. seconds. This is a non-debatable motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed can stay here. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks.